Hello everybody, today I'm going to show you how to make a tennis ball inside of Blender. Oh, sweet lord, Peace. Firstly, this is a beginner tutorial, so let's dive right on in. As you can see, I'm using Blender 2.9. If you're using an older version of Blender, don't worry about it. Everything will still apply, and if you're using a newer version of Blender, it'll probably still work as well. So as always, we start off with the Blender default scene, and instead of deleting the default cube, we're going to use the default cube. So first thing we're going to do is select our default cube, then head on over to our modifier tab and select it. Then we'll add a bevel modifier. Now you must be wondering how on earth is this going to turn into a tennis ball. Trust me, it's going to turn into a tennis ball. The first thing we're going to change is the limit method and change it to weight. As you can see, it looks like it's doing nothing. But what we'll do is we press tab to go into edit mode. And we'll go to the top here and change it to edge select. And then we will select these edges. Make sure to select the same edges that I do. There you go. It should look something like that. Then under the item tab over here, increase the mean bevel weight. And there you go, it's only giving you a bevel along those selected edges. The next thing we're going to do is just add in a subdivision modifier. We'll just increase this to 2. Now this still doesn't look much like a tennis ball. What we want to do is just add one more modifier and that is the cost modifier under deform. Right now it looks like it's doing nothing. That's because we're going to press tab to go out of edit mode and as you can see it's already looking more round. So what we're going to do is just increase the factor a little bit and now we have a ball. The next step is we are going to apply these modifiers. What you can do is you go up to the top here and click apply. We start with the top modifier and work our way down. In older versions of Blender you'll see there's an apply button. We can also go to object go to apply and then go to visual geometry to mesh and it will apply all of our modifiers in the stack. Next thing we want to do is just press tab to go back into edit mode then press alt and select this edge and it will select the edge loop all the way around and then we'll press control and plus on our keyboard to expand the selection and then we'll just press I on our keyboard to inset face. Just make sure that and then we'll hold down control on our keyboard and move our mouse till we get the depth a little bit deeper and then and then left click in order to bring up the inset face tool um, if it's not deep enough you can always just expand this menu and increase and decrease the depth with that selection we'll want to go down to our object data properties tab and just add a vertex group and click assign we'll name this one uh, no fur. Just remember to save as often as possible. Just remember to always save as often as possible. Because the last thing you want is for Blender to crash and you lose everything. Just remember to press tab to go back out of edit mode. We'll just go over to our modifier tab again and go down and add a subdivision surface. So already it's starting to look a little bit more like a tennis ball. So the so now our next step is to add fur, and as you can see, looking at this image of a fur, and as you can see, looking at this image of a tennis ball, there's quite a lot of fur. As you can see, there's these long, straggly ones, as well as little tufts and the shorter fur. So there's going to be three different sets of fur that we're going to add to this ball to make it look a little bit more realistic. So now what we need to do is go over to our particle properties panel and click on this plus sign to add a particle system. We're just going to rename it to uh, strands because this one's going to be used to make the strands. We'll also rename it here. Remember to change it over to hair. We're going to reduce the number of these strands down to 25. We're going to reduce the number of these strands down to 20 and we're going to decrease the length of these strands to 0, 0,1. 
5, or 1, 2. So now you can see there's these strands. Next thing we're going to do is go down to viewport display. We're going to increase this number because it will give the strands a bit more detail when we start um, adding some shape to them. So we'll increase this to 4. Then we'll scroll down till we get to children and we'll add interpolated. Under interpolated we're just going to change the render amount to 10. So when we render it's not suddenly a hell of a lot more hair. Then we're going to scroll down till we get to roughness. This top value we're going to make 0, 0.0019. As you can see it's already starting to do something. And then we're going to make the size 0, 0,1. So now it's add a little bit more detail to each of these strands. We're also going to change the random amount to 0, 0,8 and the size of them down to 0, 0,1. Okay, so oh, the random amount we're actually going to make 0, 0, 0,08. There we go, that's a bit better. We'll also decrease the size to 0, 0, 0,05. Okay, we'll keep the, that the way it is. And that will be our strands. So moving on to the next phase, we're just going to click on this little arrow and we're going to say duplicate particle system. We're going to select this one and call it um, and call it clumps. I will rename it here as well. And then we'll just click on this so it has its own particle system. And we'll call it clumps. So now for clumps, we're going to increase this number to 100. And we're going to change the length of the hair to 0, 0,1. So it's slightly shorter. We'll then play around with the clumping. So we'll increase this amount just a little bit and we'll decrease the shape we'll then go down to roughness and we'll keep it pretty much the same. You can play around with these settings till you get something that you personally like. By the way Let's just scroll down to where we have vertex groups. Underneath density, we're going to add no fur. As you can see, it sort of piled it in to that space. So we want to just click on this symbol here, which will invert it. And we'll do the same with the strands. So now there's no hair being emitted from inside here. The next thing we're going to do is just create a new uh, particle system by clicking on the plus button. We're going to call this one curls and also rename it here curls. Okay, this one we will increase to 2500 and don't forget to change it over to hair. Ooh, see, that's a hell of a lot of hair. We're also going to decrease the length to 0, 0.05 increase the increase the strand steps to five um, change the children to interpolated this we can increase the display amount so we can see things a little bit clearer to 35 and when we render it will go all the way up to 100 i will scroll down to the roughness we'll make the uniform down to 0, 0.0054 i think should be fine and the size of it to 0, 0.05 so now you can see it's made things a little bit more random um, also don't forget underneath density to make it no fur and invert it there we go random will change to 0, 0.04 and the size will change to 0, 0.01 see now it's nice and fluffy and then underneath kink we are going to change it to curl. See now it's like these big curls, so we want to change the size of those curls to 0, 0,01. 
so now I've got much smaller curls. Um, and that is pretty much that. Um, the one other thing we're going to want to do if we change over to rendered mode, we can see it's all gray and we all know a tennis ball is in gray, it's green. So what you want to do is go over to your material properties. We'll click on the plus button over here to add another material. Uh, we'll just click on new. We'll change the name of this to uh, fur. We'll change the color to green. If we go back to our particle systems, all we need to do is go down to where it says render, change the material to fur. Do that for each of these. And there we have it, our tennis ball. Now, you might be wondering how on earth I got that logo onto the front of my tennis ball. Well, in order to do that, let's just first click on this button here, here, and here to turn off the hair in the display port just so we can move around a bit easier. We'll then select the ball, tab into edit mode, press alt, and then select this edge to select the whole way around. And then we'll go to the edges menu and click on mark seam you'll see it's changed color all that that's done is told blender where the seam of this model is so when we flatten it out um, in the uv editor it'll know where to cut for those of you who don't already know we'll then go over to the uv editing tab we'll then press a on our keyboard to select everything and then press u and then click unwrap and now and now we have our uvs so now that we have our uvs we can then go over to the shading menu which is over here click here to make sure slot 2 is selected which should be fur and then we'll press shift a go to texture image texture and you plug in the color or the alpha from your image we'll then click on open find our logo and click on open image so now if we were to go back to our particles and turn on our curls we can see we have a texture but it looks pretty weird firstly it's black and white it's gotten rid of all the green as well as it seems like it's way too big so what you're going to want to do is go over to the uv editor hover over our uvs and press a on our keyboard to select everything uh, then go to the top here, click on our logo. I don't know what logo you have, but you can add whatever logo you like. And then we're just going to increase the size and line it up with one of these panels. So let's just change this to rendered view so we can see what's going on. And then tab out of edit mode so we can see what the fur is doing. Oh, see, it's already starting to work. But as you can see, it's this repeating pattern. And the reason it's doing that is because inside of our shading, it says repeat under our image texture. So what you're going to want to do is just click here and change it to clip. And now it shows it just once. Now in order to get our color back, what we're going to do is we're going to press Shift A, go to shader, go to color, mix RGB. One of these we're going to make black and the other we're going to make green. Then we're going to plug it into our base color and then we're going to take the alpha or the color depending on how you've got your logo set up. If it's got an alpha you can use the alpha, if it's just the color you can use the color. So I'm just going to use the alpha because I've got an alpha and I'm going to plug it into the factor. Ah. But it's the wrong way around. So what you're going to want to do is just switch these colors around. And there we have it. But just to show you one more step, because our logo is now the wrong way around, we're just going to press R on our keyboard to rotate our UVs. And then we're just going to type in 90 so it rotates 90 degrees. Then we're just going to press G and place it where we need it. So now if we go over to, oh, so now if we tab out of edit mode again, it's almost right. Go 180 and put it there.
Tag bei der Welt mal. So, there we go. Um, you can play around with lighting and texturing all you like. Also, if you would like to get your hands on this project over here, um, you can become a patron and you can download it. It's just to help support the channel, help it grow and keep it going. And I'll really appreciate it. It's pretty much a donation, but I'll still give you access to all the project files for all the tutorials on my channel. If you enjoyed this tutorial, don't forget to hit that like button and subscribe to the channel so you can catch all of my latest tutorials. Until next time, stay creative. Distant vantage point. The Earth might not seem of any particular interest. But for us, it's different. Thousands of confident religions, ideologies, and economic doctrines. Every hunter and forager, every hero and coward, every creator and destroyer of civilization. Every king and peasant, every young couple in love, every mother and father, every saint and sinner in the history of our species. Thank you.